Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of the Mylon Sword Podcast, the countdown to episode 30. Countdown. And uh, we're about two away from episode, or the one-year anniversary as well. Dang, that's it's gonna quick. going to be good. One-year anniversary episode uh, 28, and the 30th episode is also approaching us pretty fast. So it's going to be a pretty good ride. I have uh, what we're going to be talking about in the next couple episodes planned out, so we're good. Yeah, definitely. Today, though, we're talking about the much-anticipated, highly hyped Bird That's Box. That's right. Highly hyped. Highly hyped Bird Box <laughs> on Netflix. Sandra Bullock. Um, Who's Sandra Bullock? Exactly. The, apparently, no one knew who Sandra Bullock was up until this point. Uh, and we're going to be talking about reviews. So there's going to be a lot of spoilers. So just to warn you guys, before you guys watch this episode, there will be a lot of spoilers for Bird Box. Um, so yeah, let's get right into it. What'd you think of the movie so far? Oh, uh, let's see. You know, it was okay. It was, it was bearable. Um, but I think a lot of people were like bird box, bro. And I was like bird box. Okay. So you, you thought it was good, but it was like not worth the hype. Yeah, no, I think I, think everyone put it like at a nine, like super good. Yeah. And I was like seven. I liked it. Yeah. I, I give it about an eight. Yeah. Um, it was really good. I really enjoyed it. I like the concept of it. It's like the quiet place meets the happening in a way. Um, you know, they don't. The only thing I, I was a little disappointed about is they didn't show what the monster looked like. And there was a concept of a monster that they were going to show in um, Sandra Bullock's dream of like a deformed kind of baby, like demon looking monster, which I was really looking forward to seeing after I saw the concept art to that. Um, and I know that they had kind of teased the monster a little bit when they show that crazy guy pulling out his drawings and stuff like that uh pretty like later in the movie and you see the demon and i was like i kind of want to see what that looks like and stuff like that so i guess everybody sees something different when they look at the monster and some people just embrace it and some people just kill themselves because they can't handle it um but nonetheless let's just get right into it the movie begins with uh sandra bull's character talking to two kids she calls them girl and boy yeah and um she's telling them that no matter what don't take your blindfold off because if it sees you or if you see it um you're going to go crazy and pretty much, you know, bad stuff's going to happen and stuff like that. And you're kind of at this point wondering what the hell's going on. You're like, yeah, like, why, why can't they take off their blindfolds? What is this thing? And then we go, we cut back to a flashback of her pregnant with Sarah Paulson, her sister in the movie. Definitely. Who uh, is a fantastic uh, horror, well-known actress as well. And uh, we see her uh, open up about the fact that her sister is pregnant, but her sister just says it's just it's just another thing. She doesn't really she didn't want to be pregnant, but she's not going to have an abortion. Yeah. But she thought about putting up the kid for an adoption. Definitely. And uh, so we see throughout their process of her going to the hospital and getting checked and everything. And that's when we f- get introduced to our first victim. Actually, before that, they're on the on the TV. We do see the uh, the warnings that it's happening overseas and stuff like that. People are committing suicide and yeah. stuff like that. And that kind of is just right there shows you that okay it's going to be probably coming over here pretty soon we don't know what this thing is we don't know if it's an alien we don't know if it's we don't know what it is yeah um but then uh we when we see sandra bullock out of the hospital we see this lady who was on the phone in the hallway just start hitting her head up against the on the window and her head starts bleeding out and stuff like that and then it starts kind of going down going crazy in the city um and then Sarah Paulson's character actually sees it and uh, sees, I think, her mom or something like that, or she sees someone. I forget who she sees. Yeah, I don't but remember. she uh, she ends up flipping the car with Sandra Bullock inside of it, yeah. and ultimately walking into a trash truck and dying. She's in the movie for about a total of five minutes. Yeah, I think I think what's interesting is how quickly it basically starts. Like, there's a little bit of you know, obviously you get to see Sandra Bullock's conflict throughout the entire movie of being a mother yeah um right off the bat um but you really it really just kicks right in yeah it just goes right from the start uh and then we get introduced to uh, a family who brings sandra bullock in but the girl who goes out and tries to rescue sandra bullock that's the girl that goes uh, mom 
and she gets in a car and just incinerates herself. Oh yes, yes, that's when it goes to mom. Yeah, yeah. So I was just kind yeah. of tripping out. I was like, she just killed herself in yeah. the fire, dude. That's the worst way to go out. Definitely, bird box challenge. Blindfold yourself. Go to Monrovia. Go to that house. Yep. That's yeah. That's another thing that's been kind of spurring up ever since this movie is the bird box challenge to do random household things every day with the blindfold yeah and people are taking it stupid netflix actually had to go on their twitter and say don't do it <laughs> yeah he goes just if you're gonna do it be safe doing it don't be stupid yeah but we encourage you not to do it and stuff like that yeah. but as the movie progresses we get introduced to kind of the familiarity of who we're going to be seeing throughout the movie in a way um, we see this group that kind of sticks together, but it goes back and forth to uh, present time and past to kind of set up for what happened and how they got to where they are. Yeah. And throughout the entire time, you're seeing uh, Sandra Bullock and the the girl and the boy go onto this boat, onto this river raft, but you have no idea where they're going. Um, Sandra Bullock pulls a badass machete move uh, earlier or later on in the movie where she just grabs a machete and just starts hacking at the guy. Uh, who tries to go on the boat and tries to make her see the yeah what whatever it is, and she just starts slicing with the machete, and I thought that was pretty badass. Um, but then we figure out uh, she she does have a love interest in the movie, yeah, um, and ultimately stays with that guy because she kind of feels safe with him and stuff like that. But we see throughout the uh, movie, we see like a bunch of skeptical characters. At one point, they even try to say if they can. Uh, look outside in the cameras and see if that would affect them. And, yeah, that still affects them, I guess, because it's just looking at the thing. No, that was super bold of the, the the guy. He owns the house, right? That's the guy? I think so. Yeah, and he's like, I'll take one for the team, basically. Yeah, and he just sits there in his chair tied down. Yeah. And he just uh, watches the cameras, and then, you know, his eyes get it to that certain way, and then he ends up killing himself. But I think his death was one of the worst. Yeah, but low-key... We should all make this known. I'm going to make this known early. The guy, the bald guy, I forget who his name is. I'm going to pull up all the names because I just feel like we're just calling them by people. And yeah. So uh, I'll pull up all the names, but go ahead and keep talking. Yeah. He should have lived. He was the one playing it smart. Everyone else fell victim, fell victim to being too nice and naive. Like, he was a dick. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But. You're talking about Douglas. Douglas, yeah. Yeah, the older man. The older man. Yeah. He could have lived, bro. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Sandra Bullock's character's name is Mallory. Her uh, love interest in the movie's name is Tom uh, Douglas. And then um, the man who dies is Greg. It's be played by B.D. Wong. You guys know him famously from Jurassic Park, and uh, he was on, I think, a season or two of Gotham. But, uh, yeah, uh, so we do see, uh, you know, Mallory, and um, she's as she's going out, they uh, when they first get in, they they are approached by uh, some girl who kind of knocks on the door. Her name is uh, Olympia, and she's pregnant as well when she comes in and she accepts them. But Olympia makes a, a stupid call later on in the movie, which we'll get to in a bit. Yeah. But uh, as you're seeing them bring more people in, uh, Douglas's character, uh, he or you know Douglas says that uh, as we bring more people in, we're running out of food. You know, so that's bad. Yeah. So they got to make a. A, uh, they got to make a you know a, a stop to the uh, grocery store, which was one of the most riskiest and probably nerve wracking scenes I've ever seen. Just driving to that store and then you see the he's running over bodies and he keeps telling them there's speed bumps and stuff like that. That just scene was so cool. Yeah, uh, and then at one point I think all the creatures just start jumping on the car or whatever you know. Yeah. Which was pretty interesting and stuff, but um. Then they get out and go to the store, and then they start shopping, and that's when we get the birds, the introduction of the birds. You do see in the future scenes when she's on the thing and everything, you're kind of wondering what's those for. Well, we do see that in the store when uh, they are approached by one of the store uh, employees who is on the loading dock uh, trying to fake his way to get in, but he's actually possessed by whatever the uh, monster is, and the birds go nuts, and that's the significance of the birds and the bird box and stuff like that, so... Um, we see them get, grab their food and they come home, but then, uh, also shout out to that, to the, uh, can I see the characters names real quick? Yeah, which one? Uh, the black guy who, who ends up dying inside oh, the store. about uh, Charlie. Yeah, Charlie. He's a real one. Yeah, Charlie just. He's a real one. Like he has a bunch of knowledge, obviously, uh, but he like takes one for the team by going out and tackling. Yeah, he uh, risks for his, the coworker. He yeah. risks, he risked his life. Yeah, I'm trying to find that one psycho guy who comes in later on. I forget his name, but he's a pretty major character, um, and he he goes like pretty psycho when he uh, gets in. 
Yeah. I don't remember his name, but uh Anyway, he's like a he's Gary? Like a, was his name Gary? I think so. Was it Gary? It might have been Gary, yeah. Um yeah, I think it was Gary. But Gary, he comes in pretty later on because Olympia wants to let him in because she said, "Will you guys let me in?" And I kind of want to return the favor of trying to help someone else. Yeah, she was like, "I know what I know what it's like to be out there." Yeah, and she and she kind of pulled that wrong thing where you're just like in the movie, like, "Well, that probably was a bad idea." Yeah, because you don't know who's where he's been, where it's been up to. So uh, we see that, and as he comes in, you start seeing him kind of act a little suspicious, weird. Um, he <sighs> ends up uh, pulling out all these drawings, and you see they're the monster and stuff like that. Then he starts un doing all the blinds and everything and stuff like that and he goes completely mental on them yeah. um and stuff like that and then just starts trying to kill everyone as they're trying to kill him you know and stuff like yeah. that so um everyone in pretty much in this next scene uh dies except the the two babies oh yeah they do get they both have the babies Mallory and Olympia they have their babies uh Mallory has a boy Olympia has a a girl and stuff like that. And they both, uh, the babies end up going both with Mallory because Olympia ends up uh, seeing the light or the monster and ends up yeah. uh, getting killed. Yeah, that scene was also pretty sick, too. I really enjoyed that scene where Sandra Bullock was like, you know, she agreed previously earlier in the movie that she would do anything to take care of Olympia's daughter. Yeah. Um, and you just see, like, Olympia going crazy. And then uh, she's like, give me the baby, give me the baby. Yeah, give me the baby, give me the baby. I was like, dang, that's so She, she kind of went above and beyond for that, which was pretty cool. Yeah. And then we end up uh, seeing everybody die, and then it comes down to Tom and Gary, and you hear a gunshot, but you don't know who dies. And then eventually we kind of find out that Tom killed Gary. So yeah. then they end up uh, moving out of that place. They end up leaving. It's five years later. The kids are, of course, each five years old now, um, and they're teaching them how to survive. Uh, if there's ever danger, just to ring the bell. That way they can hear the noise and come close to them. Um and stuff like that. But you also see that there's some people that have embraced whatever this monster is and they just live their lives regularly. They're just a little bit more psycho. Yeah. Um, but you start seeing them kind of grow up and stuff like that. And then they finally get a, a radio signal because throughout the whole movie, they get these walkie talkies trying to find a signal of someone who's out there to help yeah. them out. They finally get a radio signal about a place that's out in the forest that when you hear the birds, just run towards the sound and we'll take care of you. Um, Wait, I have an interesting, I have an interesting theory too, about those people that are like kind of ransacking homes and all the people that that, like like just don't have blindfolds. Yeah, Um, was I was reading a theory that those people were like already mentally ill. Yeah, um, and so like they're used to the what the what the creature does to them, seeing things and hearing things, and so it doesn't affect them because they're used to living their day to day life like that. Yeah, so that when they see anything, it's just like oh, that's it's Tuesday. Yeah, well, that's a, that's a good theory, too, because they do mention uh, early on, Gary does mention some mental people getting out and stuff like that, and they're just kind of walking around trying to embrace people and shit like that. Yeah, like you can see the light finally. Yeah, so that that's a pretty good theory. That could go hand-in-hand hand with the movie. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but then we start seeing that, uh, of course, as they're about to leave, Tom and those people, they move up, and Tom... Uh, he basically tells Mallory, he goes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go distract him or else you guys aren't going to get out of here. So I'm going to go distract him and, you know, you guys get out of here, which he eventually sacrifices himself. But he has one of the most badass scenes in the movie, I have to yeah, say. Yeah, he, he, uh, he's seen the monster and he's still just going. Yeah, dude, he got the shotgun. He came out blindfolded and shot two of them, killed them. And then he took off the blindfold and he saw yeah. the monster. He killed the other two. And then... Uh, shot himself yeah which was kind of like a hero's death in a way yeah um but you see the toll it takes on mallory and eventually she uh they're t- so that they, now we're all caught up they're going down the rapids and everything uh and mallory tells them at the at the fall one of us are gonna have to are gonna have to look we're gonna have to see i, I don't know who i'm gonna choose yet but then you you see she couldn't make the decision because i know i mean i think i think she kind of makes it clear on who she wants to choose the, the, she wants to. She wants to choose girl. Yeah, but she couldn't. No, she just couldn't because of the fact they're kids and no. stuff like that. 
Therefore, she just doesn't choose anyone, and they all just end up falling over to the rapids. Yeah, she's like, we're going to do this blindfolded. Yeah. Also, really, really cool fact I read was that she actually is blindfolded the entire time. Yeah. Like, when, so, she's like, like, during the shooting, she was running into the cameras, running to trees, and things like that. So, like, she's to get the real, like. Full-blown method. Yeah. She uh, would actually go blindfolded. That's pretty cool. Like, so much so that it was kind of making her difficult for her to sleep because she was used to being in the dark. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, then they end up uh, going over and they find each other. Was but, but that's when they the kids get <laughs> tested and that's when Mallory gets tested about um, who to trust and everything because the kids get tempted about almost to take off their blindfolds because yeah. the the monster is um, kind of tempting them to take them off and see the light and stuff like that. And then we do see uh, the real Mallory saying, "Don't take them off," and, and she ends up getting them and stuff like that. And then we hear uh, Tom's voice from the monster uh telling mallory it's okay to take them off and stuff and that's when you start hearing the birds that the guy talked about in the walkie talkie yeah they run towards the noise and they uh they finally get to the safe location where when they get in they of course the first thing they do is check their eyes this is the part in the movie where i was just like i didn't even think about these people that is true they're probably like the only ones that would really survive this never even thought about this but in this part we do see that we're at a, a home for the blind yeah like a school for the blind taking picture taking care of them and i didn't even think about blind people when i was watching this movie uh but they ended up going there and they released their birds and that's when uh mallory sees her doctor from yeah. like when she was first pregnant and stuff like that and we see the the doctor was like so who are these and then they the kids introduce themselves as boy and girl and that's when mallory gives them their real names and stuff like that and the movie just kind of ends right there yeah which is super epic because because, like, like I had mentioned previously, that's, like, her conflict throughout is embracing motherhood. And that was that last barrier. Yeah, of uh, her being safe, finally. Yeah, because you see, you finally see, that like her love for them. Yeah. Um, um, and then which, she has that final moment of, like, okay, like, you are human. Yeah. And like, you're my humans. Yeah. Uh, which, yeah, is ultimately the kind of message in this movie is just to uh, her embracing her motherhood and stuff like that. She never, she never really wanted to be a mother. Was kind of forced upon her she was a single mother and stuff like that and in the end she just after all the stuff she's been through and that now that she knows that she feels safe and stuff like that she can finally embrace embrace it and stuff like that and yeah. start start her family up again and stuff like that so all in all though yeah it was a very good movie i i really enjoyed it um and the message it gave was was really cool really nice um very good uh and yeah i'm gonna like i said i'm gonna give it an eight out of ten yeah um, what, what do you think is holding you back from giving it to 10 out of 10? I did watch uh, Kill Count, Dead Meets Kill Count, um, and he you know, he did a kill count on this. And, uh, yeah, the, I think the thing that held me back, of course, was not showing the monster, okay. which I would have loved to see the monster. But there's some plot points in this movie where they do bring up something, and then they just never really talk about him again. Yeah. I can't remember one off the top of my head right at this moment, but when Dead Meat was kind of explaining it in his video, like I was like, yeah, they're, they're, I would have liked to explain more of that or stuff like that, you know? Um, so the, I think those are the two that's keeping me from giving it a 10. Yeah. A 10. I think for me what really kind of held it back was that time that kind of felt a little slow and prolonged. Yeah. Um, like it, it starts out quick, but it's kind of long. And there's like gap. Gap. Then that really bothered me too, because like you have them in the house, and then you go to like five years later. Yeah, but all in all, though, I I don't think they can make a sequel to this, and I don't want them to kind of make a sequel to this. I think the ending was just kind of perfect the way it was. The only thing I can think they make a sequel with is like what happens with humanity going forward. Yeah. Um, because obviously the creature's still out there. Like, there's no question about that. Um, but. Girl, or does girl and boy end up living there forever? Yeah. Do they go back out into the world? That's probably the only way. Yeah, you can see a sequel yeah. spawning from that. But uh, or they could do like the purge, where you get a different perspective of like the psychos and stuff like yeah. that out there. Yeah. Because I know that like when they got possessed, something it was like embracing their inner killer. Yeah. Usually, um, or they saw something that would scare the shit out of them and they make them want to commit suicide. Yeah. But at the same time. I also saw one point where when that girl first saves Mallory in the beginning, she kind of she, – she goes up and says, like, Mom, so uh, is it tempting you on whatever it can just tempt you with just to kind of yeah. bring you into the light, you know, and stuff like that? And 
So I'm just kind of curious. I want to see. I want. I want. I want more of an explanation of the monster if they can. Yeah, that'd be nice. Um, wow. Just to see its true power, what it can really do, and stuff like that. Yeah. What do you think you would have saw? What if I would have saw? If it's going off my 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 fears, probably spiders. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? It's going off my fears. Put the nun from the Conjuring. The nun, dude, <laughs> you're screwed. It's over. Um, so that's gonna do it for this uh, podcast. And thank you guys for watching it. Next week we were gonna be talking about our uh, top. Uh, horror conventions we want to attempt, uh, attempt to attend this year. Yeah. Um, hopefully get either media or just some cash and just go check them out. Definitely. Um, conduct some interviews or whatever, see yeah. what happens. But uh, thank you guys for listening to the Miles Horror Podcast, episode 26. We're on the road to episode 30 and yeah. on the road to the one-year anniversary. Yeah, on the road. Uh, on if the you road. guys have any suggestions of what you guys want to see or hear, or, you know, suggestions for uh, content, uh, for podcasts, for live streams, let us know in the comments. We, we're comments. always happy to, uh, you know, let the uh, let the madhouse run things, right? Is that what the new video let says? The, let the inmates run the asylum. Yeah. That's how it goes. So thank you guys for listening to the Mile Sword Podcast, and we'll see you guys next week. Yeah, bye.